Welcome, Zaslow Show 2.0. It is a Thursday, the 29th of June. Good to have you aboard. We are a Blue Wire podcast presented as always by Anna Jar and Levine, Accident Attorneys, 800-747-3, 800-747-3733. None of Zaslow Show 2.0 would be possible without our friends at Anna Jar and Levine, Accident Attorneys. And if you've been involved in an accident, if you're dealing with a personal injury, they're your friends too. Matter of fact, they're going to treat you like family. Anna Jar and Levine, Accident Attorneys, 800-747-FREE, 800-747-3733. So glad to have you aboard today. Make sure you like, you rate, you comment, you do all that fun stuff. That helps the algorithm. I, I, I don't know what the algorithm is, but I know you do that stuff. That's good things for the algorithm. Then I get all the monies and then everybody is happy. So please do that. I greatly appreciate you. I love you a long time. We're, we're get, we got a lot to get to here today. NBA free agency officially begins tomorrow. So we're going to start to get some resolutions. We're going to start to see some more moves being made. I think it's 6 p.m. tomorrow. 6 p.m. tomorrow. Think business is going to be a booming. So we got NBA stuff to get to. We do have rumors out there as far as the Heat. All right, look, the Heat are going to lose some guys. All right, so we're going to get to that here coming up on the show. We got other NBA rumors happening here. Huge pro wrestling weekend coming up this Saturday afternoon, live from London. You got WWE Money in the Bank, one of the best pay-per-views of the year, a super important premium live event. WWE Money in the Bank this Saturday afternoon, and our pal Peter Rosenberg is going to be on the show today. You know we're big fans of Peter Rosenberg. Hot 97 mornings up in New York. ESPN New York 98.7 in the afternoons, Michael K Show, of course, the Cheap Heat Podcast on The Ringer, and of course, a WWE correspondent, and he'll be on the broadcast, doing studio work, he'll be on the broadcast this Saturday afternoon for WWE Money in the Bank. We always like talking to Peter, he's really gracious with his time, so Rosenberg will join us coming up on the show today, always looking forward to catching up with him. Tell you what I caught up on and actually finished last night. So I told you guys, uh, highly recommend, highly recommend you watching The Bear. I told you that a few days ago. And my wife and I, (coughs) excuse me, we watched the first half of The Bear a few days ago. 10 episodes. Each episode is about 35 minutes, although one episode, and I'll get to that, is an hour and five minutes. And... We finished The Bear last night, watched the final four or five episodes of season two. And I already told you, I don't think there's a show on television that has better acting right now than The Bear. I'm blown away by the acting on this show. Just blown away. And the way they make you care about the characters. And it's really interesting too, because the entire first season of The Bear... Is, is essentially in the, in the restaurant, which at, at that point was called The Beef. This season, most of the season takes place outside the kitchen. And you learn a lot about each character's personal lives. We finished it last night. The show is phenomenal. I was so sad, by the way, at the end of the show. Not that it's over. Probably got to wait like another year for season three to come out. That, and it's on Hulu. It's an FX show. I wasn't sad because it was over. I was sad because, I, I, I mean, my heart broke for the way that it ended. I was so upset with how it ended and what happened to a couple of the characters. I mean, this, this show has really grabbed me. It has hooked me. I really think The Bear, and if you go on Rotten Tomatoes, media score for The Bear, it's 100%. I think the audience score is like 95. I think it's one of the all-time great shows. I don't say that lightly. I'm just, I'm blown away with this show. And there's this one scene in the final episode, which I imagine people are talking about. It's like 21 minutes. And this is the kind of stuff I love. Like, I'm not big like cinematography guy, but there are certain things that'll catch my eye where I can tell them like, this, this is amazing what they're doing here. This scene is unbelievable. And there's a 21-minute scene, I believe it is, where 
there, it's the opening of the new restaurant, and it's one take. It's one camera, it's one shot, and they're following around all the different characters from the kitchen to, to the dining room, to the kitchen, to the dining room, and it's all in one take. And that's the kind of stuff I notice where, okay, if anyone fucks up, if anyone does something wrong, you gotta do the whole thing again, which they probably had to do a number of times, but the take that they use, it's like 20 minutes long, it's one take, it's incredible. And, and I'm not, you know, Look, spoilers. I mean, it's 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 a drama. It's not you know, it's not like it's a, a twist ending or something like that. I can't recommend this show enough. And the show gives you Ajita just watching. I can't even imagine if you're in the restaurant business and you watch this show because from what I've heard, it's very very accurate in that regard. I never worked in the restaurant business. It's very accurate in that regard, and I can only imagine if if, if the show gives me anxiety. Like, they're so good at portraying the stress that is happening in these scenes. And if that's happening to me, I can only imagine someone who is in the restaurant business. And holy shit, the restaurant business looks so hard, so stressful, so intense. I do want to add finally here, before we get to the really important stuff. I think it's episode six, maybe episode six or seven. The Fishes, the episode titled Fishes. And, and it's the Christmas dinner at, you know, with the, uh, the story of the seven fishes. It's the Christmas dinner at the Berzato's house like five years ago. And really gives you a glimpse into how screwed up this family is. Great cameos. I won't spoil any of them for you because I, I liked being surprised about some of them. Great cameos. And, like, really famous people playing these characters for one time only, you know? Without spoiling anything for you if you haven't gotten to that episode yet. That episode, Fishes, I think is the greatest episode of television I have ever seen in my life. I, I was, I was so capped. That's the episode that's an hour and five minutes long. Twice as long as every other episode. I was completely captivated. Like, I was scared watching it. I was sad watching it. Obviously, it has funny parts because the show does have a lot of funny stuff. It's so well written. The Fishes episode may be the greatest episode of television I have ever seen in my life. Like, whatever episodes you want to compare it to, you know, the Pine Barrens episode in The Sopranos or the Red Wedding in Game of Thrones, whichever one, whatever famous television episode you want to compare it to, just the acting in this show that episode, I was blown away. And it's, it's, it's so intense, like I said, and so stressful. All the episodes, really. But especially that one there. If you just started season two, just wait till you get to the Fishes episode. I'm telling you, it's I, as great an episode of television I have ever experienced. Unbelievable. As you can tell, as you can hear, I'm, I'm so completely captivated by this show. I can't wait for season three. Probably gonna have to wait like a year. Uh, or, or maybe even longer because, you know, with the writer's strike and everything going on, all of our favorite shows are going to take a little bit longer to come out. But anyway, I can't recommend the show enough. So we finished The Bear last night. I loved it so much. The ending made me really sad. All right. So how about the Marlins, by the way? Marlins yesterday, a 6-2 win. At the Red Sox, Jazz Chisholm, he homers. He homered, I think when it was 4-1, he homered go up to, go, to go up 5-1. It, it was 1-1 going into the rain delay that occurred, I think, in the sixth inning. Great effort from Braxton Garrett yesterday. And the Marlins piled on there after they came back from the rain delay, including that solo home run from Jazz Chisholm. Marlins win 6-2. Terrific job. And now they have a chance to sweep the Red Sox later today. It's a 6-10 game. And then this weekend, the Marlins are at the Braves. So how about that? You got a chance to sweep the Red Sox, but at the very least, you won the series at Fenway, a place historically that's been impossible for the Marlins. So at the very worst, you come winning two out of three. Hopefully a sweep, but two out of three going into a major series this weekend at the Atlanta Braves. Marlins got something cooking. Now you may be saying to yourself, yeah, Zaslow, welcome to the party. 
hey, you know what? Yeah, you'd be right. It's, it's taken me a little while to join the party. I was busy. Heat, Panthers. I had a lot going on. I'm living my life. So yes, a little late to the party. But the Marlins got something cooking here. Make sure you... Make sh it doesn't just have to be something that holds us over until Dolphins training camp starts next month. They got something cooking here. And they're a fun little team. Get lots of hits. It's not all home runs and strikeouts. They go from first to third. They go from base to base. You're getting singles up the middle of the infield. This It's a fun little team. And Jazz, what a terrific return. Gene Segura homered yesterday also. What a terrific return for Jazz, who had three hits two nights ago in his return and three RBI. Last night, he homers as well as first back off of the IL. So the Marlins will go for the sweep today against the Boston Red Sox. So before we get to some NBA stuff, I was on yesterday, I was on the BetQL Network, uh, BetMGM Live, which I've been on a bunch of times over the last few months. I'm really grateful to them. That kind of stuff is huge for me, because if you want to talk about, you know, and I'm on VEASAN Live a lot as well, out in Vegas, but that kind of stuff is huge for me, just like my appearances on the Levitard Show, where I'm trying to grow Zaslow Show 2.0. All of you are doing your part. You're telling your friends. You're telling your family. Uh, if you're interested in sponsoring on the show, obviously you get in touch with me. We see if it works for you. We see if it works for me. And then I love to partner up with you. But it's super helpful when I go on these shows, like last night on BetMGM Live on the BetQL Network, where, <coughs> yeah, it gets me a lot of exposure. So it really helps in, in growing the show. And that's the show that my friend Trista Crick hosts as well, along with Ryan Horvat and, uh, and Nick. I, I don't know Nick's last name. I apologize for that. But I love going on it because I'm friends with Trista. So I'm on the show there last night. And go check it out. It, it, it's on the, on the podcast. They actually isolate my 15-minute spot on with them. So it's really easy if you just want to listen to me. And obviously, we talk about all Miami stuff. And anyway, so one of the questions they asked was, which is more likely to come to Miami? Damian Lillard or Dalvin Cook? Great question, right? Great question. Miami, center of the sports universe, best sports town. So <coughs> I told them Damian Lillard. Now, we know the Dolphins have offered a contract. We don't know the terms. We don't know the years. We don't know any of that. We also know that Dalvin Cook absolutely wants to play for the Dolphins. Now, I think if this makes sense, I think there's a better chance that Dalvin Cook signs with the Dolphins than Damian Lillard comes to the Heat. I think it's more likely. I think there's a better chance that it's th that the answer is Dalvin Cook. I think it's more likely that Damian Lillard is the one that comes to Miami. And if you can understand the distinction that I'm making here is Dalvin Cook, all he needs to do is decide, I want to come to the Dolphins. He has the power to. He's a free agent. The Dolphins want him. And if Dalvin Cook wants to join the Dolphins at the price they're offering, he could pick up a phone right now and say, I'm in. So I think there's a better chance for Dalvin Cook. There's an easier path for Dalvin Cook to come to Miami than Damian Lillard. But I don't think Dalvin Cook is going to agree to the price. I think the Dolphins see they have a bunch of different weapons. I think the Dolphins see, hey, we would like to have Dalvin Cook, but we got this guy, you know, we got Tua thrown to a great wide receiver core, and we have a couple of really fast, really three really fast running backs right now. Dalvin Cook's a lot better than them, but we don't need to break the bank for Dalvin Cook. So there's a it, it's an easier path for Dalvin Cook to come to Miami than Damian Lillard to come to Miami. But ultimately, when you're a running back in the NFL, you got to go where the money is. Nobody wants to pay running backs anymore. Nobody wants to sign a running back to a second contract anymore. So if you're Dalvin Cook, I would love for Dalvin Cook to come to the Dolphins. If you're Dalvin Cook, you got to go where the money is. So... I think it's easier for Dalvin Cook to come to Miami than Damian Lillard, but I think there's a better, I think it's more likely. It's easier for Cook. I think it's more likely that Lillard comes. 
Because I do think that Damian Lillard is going to end up on the Miami Heat. I do not believe that Dalvin Cook is going to end up on the Miami Dolphins. So we talked a bit about that. You can go check that out. And I really appreciate those guys. And, and of course, my friend Trista out there. So, like I said, we're going to talk to Peter Rosenberg. We're going to do a lot of WWE with him. You know what I got to ask him? Peter's a huge Boston Celtics fan. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna needle him about the Heat taking that ass. I'm not gonna get after him about the Heat having won three times as many championships as the Celtics since their existence. But I am gonna ask him about Marcus Smart because I I know he was devastated with the Marcus Smart trade. So we will ask about that. We'll talk a lot of WWE with him. I want to get to some news. Notes that's going on with your favorite little basketball team, the Miami Heat. But first, <coughs> guys, if you're noticing that there may be a leak in your home, it, that, that could be a serious thing. You got to take care of that immediately. Luckily for you, childhood friends of mine, my boys, the Greensteins, Water Cleanup of Florida. They have over 60 years of combined experience. Water Cleanup of Florida is prepared to handle all types of leak detection issues. 954-900-8635. After the leak is located and repaired, Water Cleanup of Florida then cleans, dries, fully restores the damaged areas. Water Cleanup of Florida, fully licensed, insured, and certified to provide that one-stop shopping that all busy business owners and homeowners require. You don't need to bring in other contractors. Water Cleanup of Florida handles the entire project from start to finish. WCUFL.com. Water Cleanup of Florida covers the entire Tri-County area. Miami-Dade, Broward, Palm Beach County. Again, WCUFL.com. Water Cleanup of Florida. 954-900-8635. Water Cleanup of Florida. We clean up your schmutz. All right. So, let's do some heat here. Max Struess. Tomorrow, free agency starts. I think Max Struess is going to get picked up quick. Apparently, there's a bunch of teams in the Central Division that are interested in Struess. I think Struess is going to get picked up quick in free agency. And obviously, the Heat are not going to make any kind of significant move before figuring out the Damian Lillard situation. I think the Heat are very in on keeping Gabe Vincent. I think the Heat are going to find a way to pay Gabe Vincent. I do not believe the Heat are keeping Struess. I think he's gone. I think that's smart from both sides. It's smart from the Heat because they keep finding the undrafted guys. You can't keep signing all of them to multi-year big money deals. I don't think you could have Struess and Robinson on your team making big money. You can't keep everybody. I think it's smart for Struess. He's an undrafted player. And now he's going to get reportedly the Pacers are going to offer him three years, $48 million. Max, you got to do it. And he, know, and he knows he's got to do it. And the Heat fan is like, the Heat fan's going to say, thank you very much. Really enjoyed your time here. Wish we could keep you, but you got to do what you got to do. Like the Heat fan is not going to be mad about that. It re it'd really be ridiculous for the Heat fan to be upset with Max Struess leaving. Happy for you. You were great for us. I, I know, you know, a couple games in the finals were obviously really rough. That's not how I'm going to remember Max Struess. Max Struess was great these last few years for the Miami Heat. But you got to find the value. In a salary cap sport, you have to find the value. And Max Struess has been a great value for the last couple of years. Max Struess at $16 million a year is no longer a great value. I told you yesterday, I was thinking Struess would get three years 45. The report out there, and that's just off the top of my head. I'm pretty much a cap expert. That was just off the top of my head. And now you got the report that the Pacers are preparing a three-year $48 million offer. So I hit that nail on the head. If you're Max Struess, you got to take it. You cannot keep him if you're the Heat. You can't do that. You cannot do that deal. And like I told you, be careful about being upset at the Heat not spending money because that's not what it's all about. It's about if you go, the Heat are already over the tax. Forget over the cap, they're over the tax. 
And then if you go over certain other numbers, first apron, second apron, I, it, it's so complicated. Then you can't make other moves. Like, for instance, the Heat aren't going to make any sign and trades. Why are they going to make a sign and trade? You know, it's like a guy like Fred Van Vliet. Oh, maybe you know, if the Heat lose Strews, maybe they can make a sign and trade for Fred Van Vliet. You can't sign him outright because the Heat don't have the cap space. But you could do a sign and trade for a guy like Fred Van Vliet. The Heat are not going to do that. Because now, and this has actually been a rule for the past few years, this happened to the Heat when they signed and traded for Jimmy Butler. When you're the team on the receiving end of the sign and trade, you are then hard capped. Meaning, you cannot go over X amount of dollars for any reason whatsoever. You are hard capped. And the Heat were hard capped that year. And the Heat are not going to be hard capped over a guy like Fred Van Vliet. Matter of fact, I don't think there's any free agent out there that the Heat would be interested in being hard capped for. So there's a lot of different rules out there and things that the Heat won't be able to do if they spend a certain amount of money. It's not just about being cheap. So I think they're going to find a way to keep Gabe Vincent. I think Max Struess is gone. I think Max Struess may be gone as early as tomorrow. Other Heat news... So, the Heat apparently are not going to waive Kyle Lowry. And when I say waive, I mean do the, the wave and stretch, where if I can explain it, Lowry is due to make about $29 million next year. <laughs> if the Heat wanted to waive him, they could do this provision called wave and stretch, where they can cut him and save money against the cap this year, but that $29 million gets spread out against the cap over the next three years. So instead of having Kyle Lowry on your team at $29 million this year and then be free of him after this year, fly away, be free. You would then have him count against your cap three equal payments over the next three years. So we're talking $9 million and change, which to me was never going to happen. Sounds so stupid. Like the only thing worse... You know how you see these teams who try to get rid of their, their bad contracts? They attach a first-round pick to it to, for you to take the contract. I hate the idea of the Heat ever doing something like that, where if it's not bad enough that this guy is on your team and he's a terrible contract, can you imagine also having to give away a first-round pick to get rid of Kyle Lowry? Awful. The next worst thing to me is having to do a, 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 wave, a wave and stretch on Kyle Lowry. If it's not bad enough that they signed this guy and he's been terrible, the next worst thing is he's going to continue to count against the cap. And we're not talking a million dollars or two million dollars against the cap. We're talking nine million dollars against the cap for the next several years. It's such a stupid idea. That was never going... I never understood that report out there. And you had several different people reporting it. Nobody knows anything right now. No one knows anything. Seriously, nobody knows anything. Don't believe anything. No one knows anything. Several different reports that the Heat are considering waving and stretching. No chance, no chance they were ever going to do that. If anything, somebody, I mean, I know he's terrible, but somebody is going to take this expiring contract. If it's not this offseason, it's at some point before the deadline. You have to believe that you could get something done and get rid of this guy. So I'm hoping it happens during this offseason. I mean, look, I know the big home run, the grand slam, the grand slam for the Heat this offseason is acquiring Damian Lillard. A home run is getting rid of Kyle Lowry. That, that's a big time offseason. Can you imagine hitting a grand slam and a home run? That's a very big offseason. So a, a, a waving and stretching of Kyle Lowry was never going to happen. But tomorrow, I, I think as soon as tomorrow, you're going to lose Max Strews. I do. I think that's going to happen as soon as tomorrow. All right. The other piece of NBA news, yes. Well, there's a couple other pieces of NBA news that I'd like to get to. The first one here, all right. Draymond Green. Apparently, Portland is going to be courting Draymond Green. Now, I know there's a report out there that Draymond did or is going to meet for dinner with Damian Lillard. 
I think that turned out to be false. Like I said, nobody knows anything. Don't believe anything that, that, that you're reading. You can believe things I tell you. Don't, don't believe the stuff you're reading on Twitter. All right, there's so much bad information out there. So I do believe, now I strongly believe Draymond Green is staying in Golden State. Like, you can't trade away Jordan Poole. That, like, that's a Draymond Green move. That's Draymond Green opted out. Oh, Draymond, we definitely want you back. You know what we're going to do? We're going to trade. We're going to get rid of Jordan Poole. You'll punch him in the face. We're going to get rid of him. Like, Draymond Green is definitely not leaving Golden State. But it would be so interesting for Draymond Green to play elsewhere. Because, now it's not going to happen. But I, I, I really believe, obviously Draymond Green's best scenario is Golden State. But he would also be a very important player on a team that's ready to win. Like, if you got a team that's pretty good, you know, like Sacramento. Like, if Sacramento added Draymond Green, I think it'd be really interesting to see the type of effect he would have on that team. He fits so perfect with Golden State. Now, Draymond Green on a team that isn't any good, like, normally, Draymond Green's probably get $100 million dollars. Normally you sign a player for that kind of money. It should be a guy who really takes you to another level. If you add Draymond Green on a bad team, I don't believe he helps you one bit. Not one bit. But on a, can he make a really good team great? Yeah, maybe. Like It'd be super interesting to see Draymond Green's effect on a team like Sacramento. Or even like Portland for that matter. If you're a Heat fan, we're not rooting for him to go to Portland. Because if he signs with Portland, Lillard's going to stay. Like, if he signs to Portland, that's Damian Lillard telling Draymond, if you sign, I will stay. So, you got to root against that if you're a Heat fan. But the other news yesterday, Kyrie Irving. So, real quick, before I get to Kyrie Irving here, let me tell you guys, the only insurance agency I use for my homeowner's insurance is Brunt Insurance. Bruntinsurance.com, 954 589 2204, and I stick with Brunt Insurance for almost 10 years now. I've been using Brunt Insurance to make sure that my home is covered, to make sure that I'm getting the most affordable coverage, to make sure that I don't have to lay awake at night wondering what's going to happen if something happens to my home, how am I going to take care of that? I stick with Brunt Insurance because I know I have the most affordable coverage out there, and I don't have to worry about anything. Because wherever you're calling from, you could be calling from North Florida, Central Florida, South Florida. Brunt Insurance has locations in Davie, in Stewart, in Lakeland. 954-589-2204. Wherever you're calling from in Florida, Greg Brunt and his certified staff, they know exactly where you're calling from. They know what type of coverage you need. They're going to make sure that you have the most affordable care out there. And you know what? I'm not just giving you lip service here. Yes, I've been with Brunt Insurance for almost 10 years now. But they were recently rated top five insurance agency in the country, number one in Florida. So look, stop messing around. All of us want the best coverage and the most affordable rate. Would that be something you're interested in? Bruntinsurance.com, 954-589-2204. Again, Brunt Insurance, 954-589-2204. So, Kyrie Irving. Yesterday, Ramona Shelburne reports Kyrie Irving intends, important phrasing, intends to take meetings with multiple teams. Okay. I intend to make Zaslow Show 2.0 the most listened to podcast in the world. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. Kyrie Irving intends to meet with multiple teams. There will not be any team out there that meets with Kyrie Irving. There will not be a single team out there that offers Kyrie Irving more than one year other than the Dallas Mavericks. And the Mavericks are doing it for two reasons. Number one, they're a lousy organization, the Mavericks. And number two, they're kind of up against it because they made the trade for Kyrie Irving and now they don't want to just lose the asset for nothing. There will not be a single team out there that offers Kyrie Irving multiple years. Not one. Kyrie, Irving, Kyrie Irving's team puts it out there, just like Kyrie Irving's team put out there that he's trying to lure LeBron to Dallas. 
That's going to make Dallas say, you know what? We're going to give you the five years and the max that only Dallas can offer. We're going to give you the five years and the max because, wow, Kyrie's got some pull here. Maybe he could also get LeBron to come here. There's no chance that happened. That's Kyrie's people putting that out there to try and create some type of leverage and force the Mavericks to give him the max years and the max money. Dallas clearly is not interested. They want to keep him. They'll probably offer him multi-years, but they are not interested in giving him five years and 200 some odd million dollars. So Kyrie's camp keeps, put, keeps putting out these little nuggets out there. Like the newest one is, Kyrie Irving intends to take multiple meetings with teams. Oh, now we're going to have a bidding war. Wow, we better give Kyrie the five years and the max money. Otherwise, he may wind up leaving and going to another team. No other team's going to meet with him. No other team is going to offer him multiple years. No chance. And the fact of the matter is, the Dallas Mavericks, they're in full control here. The Mavericks probably feel like their back's against the wall because they don't want to lose Kyrie for nothing after trading for him. But the Mavericks are only bidding against themselves here. Like, the reality is the Mavericks should just offer him a one-year deal. We'll go from there. If no one else is offering you a contract, why would we offer you more than one year? There is not a single team in the league that will offer this player multi-years. Not one. And this goes to show in a league that the players run. The inmates run the asylum in the NBA. In a league that is player run, the player has all the control. I hate the player empowerment, but it's a reality in the NBA. For a player of his skill set, Kyrie Irving, for there not to be multiple teams to want to give him whatever he wants is pretty outrageous and pretty telling. It shows you what a giant pain in the culo this guy is. It's like I made the comparison with Nike and John Morant, right? Nike dropped Kyrie Irving's ass so quick after the link that Kyrie posted about the anti-Semitic movie, about refusing to apologize, and, you know, all the Jewish stuff. Nike dropped him so fast. John Morant was who they replaced Kyrie Irving with. And now, all this time later, you got the John Morant incident, not once, but another incident here that has him suspended the first 25 games of the season. Nike is standing by John Morant. Now let's think about this. Kyrie Irving posted a link to an anti-Semitic video, which I'm Jewish. I know that stuff is dangerous, but Kyrie Irving posted a link to an anti-Semitic video versus John Morant, who continues to play with guns. Let's think about which one could be perceived as more dangerous. And Nike decided we got to get out of the Kyrie Irving business. And they also decided we're standing by John Morant. Why am I telling you this? Because that goes to show you what a massive pain in the ass Kyrie Irving is. They're willing to stand by John Morant and everything that's happening here. And they jumped at the opportunity to drop Kyrie Irving because they got to get out of the Kyrie Irving business. And that's why... There is, it's so telling, a player of his skill set in a league that the players run, there will not be a single team outside of Dallas that offers this guy multiple years because he is a massive, unprecedented pain in the ass. I mean, if that's not telling enough for you, I, I don't know what else to tell you. And this has nothing to do with cap space. If a top-level player we're a free agent. Wouldn't every team with salary cap space be interested in him? There's five or six teams that have the salary cap space, essentially, to sign a max player this offseason. If Kevin Durant, if Giannis Antetokounmpo, if Nikola Jokic, if Steph Curry, if these guys were available, if they were free agents, wouldn't every team, all five or six of these teams with cap space, want to sign all of those guys, none of them want to sign Kyrie Irving. 
None of them. It has nothing to do with limited teams of cap space. If a top-level player were a free agent and willing to go somewhere he can get the money he's looking for, wouldn't every team be interested in a sign-and-trade? The Heat do that all the time. The Heat, meet, the Heat don't have salary cap space. They meet with players who are free agents because maybe they could negotiate a sign-and-trade. Jimmy Butler! The Heat did not have salary cap space. They met with Jimmy Butler. They did a sign-and-trade. So you don't even have to have cap space. There will not be a single team that meets with Kyrie Irving. Not one. So it has nothing to do with cap space. What it has to do is, this is the most toxic, delusional athlete of our time. And honestly, he's lucky that LeBron went back to Cleveland. Cavaliers drafted Kyrie Irving number one overall. You draft a guy number one overall, he's supposed to be a franchise-changing player. They had the worst record in the NBA over that span before LeBron got there. If LeBron never went back to Cleveland, the way that Kyrie Irving is viewed would be even harsher because he wouldn't even sniffed a championship, which he'll never sniff again, but he would not have that title on his resume. He's lucky LeBron was born 45 minutes away from Cleveland. Really lucky. So a little bit of NBA there for you. Before I get to Rosenberg here again, huge, huge WWE weekend. Very excited to talk to Peter. I got to tell you, I woke up this morning. My alarm went off. I, I almost couldn't get up. I'm so comfortable every night when I sleep. Why is that? Sheets and giggles. You guys know sheets and giggles by now. Hey, if you're not getting the great sleep that you deserve, or if you think, you know what? I could be sleeping a lot better. Sheets and I'm on, they kind of suck. Sheetsgiggles.com. My man Colin, the founder and CEO of Sheets and Giggles, not only does he love the South Florida sports teams, he's from down here, but he, he loves protecting the environment and he loves making you sheets that you're going to have for the rest of your life. I'm never going to shop anywhere ever again for sheets other than Sheets and Giggles. Sheetsgiggles.com, the Zaslow family, we are four of over 100,000 Americans who are sleeping on Sheets and Giggles, naturally softer, cooler, and more breathable sheets. You don't have to thank me. Thank my man Colin. Just go to SheetsGiggles.com. Treat yourself to the best sheets you're ever going to sleep on. Pick up a eucalyptus pillow as well. Yeah, not just a eucalyptus pillow case. I'm talking about an actual eucalyptus pillow. That's what I sleep on now. I get the best sleep. But look at this. Put them. Look how good I look. Sheets and Giggles, the only sheets you're ever going to sleep on for the rest of time. SheetsGiggles.com.